the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly addressable physical location. Further, all members of the public proposed bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to uh, tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us.com. This meeting is con convening by Zoom video app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note that the meeting is recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to share your screen, uh, not, not to share screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the meeting. Supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public's encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda and after they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each to make any uh, comments or questions or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you are not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So at this point, I would like to take a roll, attendance roll call of our roster. And um, so <clears throat> I will please uh, indicate that you're present by saying here or yes, or something along those lines. Uh, Grant Gibeon. Here. Shane Blundell. Here. John Ellis. Here. Uh, Micaiah Healy. Here, it's great to see everyone. Brian Beck. Arif Padaria. Here. Sophie Migliazzo. Here. Jonathan Wallet. Here. Uh, I'm here. Uh, Sh Shailene Crawford Procris. Procris. Here. <clears throat> here. Daryl Harmer. I'm here. Annie LaCourt. I'm here. Alan Jones. Here. George Koser. William Keller. Al Tosti. Here. Wanda Nascimento. Here. Christine Deschler. Here. Dean Carmen. Here. And David McKenna. Here. So, oh, excuse me, Tara Bradley. Here. So um, <clears throat> all of the members are present and accounted for, except we have no representative from Precinct 7. George Koser and uh, William Keller are also, Bill Keller are not uh, at the meeting. So um, <clears throat> I sent out, or I should say Tara sent out an agenda. And uh, But before we go into that, I would just, um, I, I know I sent a note out on this. Um, but I would like to um, remind everyone that uh, a dear friend, Brian Rerig, and a, and a tremendous town meeting member and capital planning committee member and um, land trust member. And I, could, I couldn't spend enough time giving you the list of all the things that Brian has done for this town. And uh, I'd like to just take a moment of silent, silence to, to remember him. Thank you. Um, we have two, two uh, so, sort of membership um, subjects to address. And one is 
um, I'd like to and I invite anyone else on the committee that would like to make comments about this, express special thanks to uh, three members of the committee who recently retired. They may or may not uh, be here tonight. They were certainly invited. And that's uh, John Dice, Mary Margaret Frankelmont, and uh, Peter Howard. They, they are all very long-term members of the Finance Committee and have just provided so much uh, hard, dedicated, and diligent work and effort over the years um, and certainly have been an inspiration to me in my working on the committee. And uh, I just would like to personally thank them for the, for the work that they've done. And I thought I heard Mary Margaret talking before. Yeah, I'm here. And is, is either Peter or uh, John here? No. I guess. Okay, well, <clears throat> had we been meeting in person, you know, we would have physically dragged you all here, but this is virtual. So <clears throat> I am, um, Mary Margaret, thank you for, for everything that you've done. Um, thank you. It's fantastic. So I don't know if you wanted to say anything to the committee or if anybody I in the do. would like to speak, uh, I certainly will. Recognize yes, you. I do have something to say. Well, please go right ahead. <laughs> okay. Mostly I just want to um, talk about about how much I appreciated being on this committee and how important it was and how, um, how happy I was that I got to work with such great people, both on the committee, but also the people whose budgets I worked on. And I, I wanna make sure that these people like Andrea the librarian and Christine um, get noticed and all the great things that they have done and I, um, I mean, Andrea is like the best librarian ever. She found ways to deal with get, getting library books and stuff to people up through the, um, the virus. She, you know, she worked, was very clever and was one of, definitely one of our best uh, librarians. And then Christine Bongiorno has been, you know, she is the epitome of what a public health nurse is supposed to be. And she has done so much to provide um, information and options and um, get people vaccinated and get, get the right information to them. So I think kudos to her. And of course, her crowning achievement, I think, is the um, Arlington Youth Counseling Center and making that a going concern. And then I wanted to talk about Joe at Rink and Rec um, for all the, you know, clever, thoughtful things he did to have outlets um, and places for the little kids to go and to keep people doing things in the summertime. So mostly that's what I wanted to talk about. And also soon um, I may be a council on aging age. And so I'll get to be the beneficiary of all she's done for the council on aging too. So mostly I just wanted to say thank you. It's been wonderful, um, I don't know, 20 years. My son was a little kid and now he's married. My daughter is off and away. And um, they would always say, what? You have finance committee again? Um, <laughs> I had to teach my son how to dial uh, the police should something happen because both kids were kind of young when I went off to do finance committee. So um, they learned a lot. But I really appreciated this. Um, it's been many years and many people, and it, I think it just shows how good a town this is and how much people want to work for the town to make it a, a great place to live. And that's it. Thank you. Well, Mary Margaret, thank you. Thank you. I think it's a great testimony to your character and typical of the contribution that you make that here. Um, at this last uh, this evening here, you're spending your time thanking everyone else when we want to thank you. So, all right, thank you. Did anyone else want to make a comment? Yeah, God. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Mary Margaret. Okay. So moving, move. I don't see any hands up. Uh, moving on. So Annie, are you there? Yes, I anyway. am. So would you 
please assume your normal role. If you see someone put their hand up and I haven't noticed it because I'm dealing with a relatively small screen on my computer, would you just butt right in and announce it? Okay. I will definitely do that. <laughs> Thank you. So um, first of all, I don't know, many of you may not have met uh, Tara Bradley yet. Uh, Liz Diggins, as you know, resigned last spring and uh, Tara has, uh, Tara, Tara joined us uh, some months ago. Uh, she's been doing a great job from, from my perspective. And I think uh, for those of us that have interacted with her, she's got some tremendous uh, uh, computer and information technology skills, um, very diligent, very helpful. And I just wanted to formally welcome her to the committee and want to say something there, Tara. Hello, good evening. Or Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for um, the, some of the interactions that we've had. I got to see a lot of your houses before I actually got to meet you in person. Um, I've been living in Arlington for almost three years now. I'm really excited to be um, helping the committee. Um, and um, Charlie wanted to let you know that Al has his hand up or he had his hand up. Oh, he just put it down. Never mind. All right. Never mind. But thank you all. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Tara. So um, we have two uh, two new members uh, on the committee, uh, Wanda Nascimento from uh, Precinct 18 and uh, Sophie Migliazzo from, um, well, I'll, I'll say she is the representative of the Avalodge representative of Precinct 8, uh, but it turns out that um, she thought she was in Precinct 8. I thought she was in Precinct 8, but she's actually in Precinct 10. So she's the at large member from Precinct 8 for this year. So uh, send a warm welcome to, uh, to both Wanda and, and to Sophie. Um, Wanda is a um, financial, um, I guess, I, let, me, let me say, uh, ex, she has a lot of financial expertise. I don't know, Wanda, you want to give a brief back, background of your, your um, professional and your history as a financial manager and, and the CFO? Sure. Um, I'm currently the CFO at Bay State Community Services, which is a um, behavioral health focused nonprofit uh, based in Quincy, but it has 17 sites all over. And before that, I worked at um, another public health organization in Boston as the director of finance. And also I was a CFO at a charter school in Boston for a while. So it's always been um, public or nonprofit focused, uh, except when I first got out of college, I actually worked for Raytheon. So that was a big switch. And I'm originally from Vermont and moved here right out of um, second year of college, I went to Bentley. And I've been in Arlington for 20, 20 years, I think, this year probably. And I have a son who graduated college. My daughter is a senior in high school. So until this, I was, you know, taxi, Uber driver, volleyball, and all that stuff. <laughs> so now I'm thinking next year, what am I going to do with all my time? <laughs> so we'll help you solve that problem. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Nice. Thank you, Wanda. That's very nice. And then Sophie, uh, Sophie is a um, legal expert by background, practice, and training. Sophie, do you want to say a couple of words? And also a town meeting member from some precinct. <laughs> I, um, I am an attorney, although I haven't been practicing the past 10 years as I have young children. So I appreciate Mary Margaret's uh, comment because uh, we will be juggling this all together. Um, I am a town meeting member for Precinct 8 at the moment, and I will be running next in Precinct 10. I'm part of that switch over. Um, so I've been on town meeting now for four years, I believe, and in Arlington for six, and looking forward to adding what I can to the great work that you all do. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. So, we're all looking forward to working with our, with our new members. And um, I think uh, the way the um, the way we've organized the um, committee assignments, 
the budget assignments, I think that both Sophie and, and um, Wanda will be working with uh, people that have had some long experience with uh, budgeting and, and town management. So there'll be a little bit of uh, close up guidance there. Um, anybody have any questions or comments they wanted to make so far? Grant, did I see your hand go up a little while ago? Or you were just scratching your head or something. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so as you may all recall, last year, we, we organized these various uh, working groups uh, to focus on some of the, um, uh, let's call it the internal needs of the finance committee. And as we start off this uh, budget season, I'd like to ask the, the people that are involved in, in these various uh, efforts to make a couple of comments on um, what they're, what, what's they're been going on recently and what they're looking forward to seeing happen in, in the year ahead. So uh, Annie, can we start out with you and the information technology effort? Um, sure. So we really had sort of three things we were trying to do as a committee. Um, sort of near term, medium term, and long term. And the near term, I believe we were successful at, which was getting us up and running electronically consistently. Um, and uh, sort of feels old hat now that we're using um, Microsoft um, SharePoint and Teams and Zoom and all the other tools that are available to us as um, just to manage meetings. Um, we have been, I have been working with the, um, oh, what's the name of that committee, Charlie? Um, ITAC? Remote participation. Oh, remote participation. Say, the remote participation committee, just to understand how they are approaching recommendations to the town about the ability to continue to uh, meet remotely or to meet in hybrid. And um, I believe they have a good plan for um, setting up spaces that will allow us some flexibility in the future, depending on the state legislature's um, allowance for us to meet remotely without violating open meeting law. Um, so I'll have some more updates on that as um, they progress from near term recommendations to longer term and to actual technical technological implementation. Um, my committee is now focused on sort of what is the data that we wanna be able to track longitudinally. And um, everybody on the committee has an assignment to talk to a few of you about, you know, for the budgets that you review, what's the data that you wish you could look back and say, here's, here's how these measures work the last five years and hope to project forward into the future. So those conversations will happen over this spring and we'll just see whether or not there's some data that we ought to be tracking um, for ourselves to inform our work and storing somewhere longitudinally. And I don't know, Alan or Daryl, if or Grant, if you want to add any thoughts to that. Um, but that's sort of the the next phase. We have a cover. I guess nobody wants you did a great job, Annie. There's no <laughs> they can add. Great, thanks. So before we go to the next subject, let's see. Lillian, are you uh, are you a member of the town or a member of the public or what's your uh, you're still on mute somehow. Can't hear you. Okay, let me just I uh, uh we can you can comment on that later, but uh, Tara, Tara, by the way, Tara is taking the minutes of the meeting. Uh, we we uh, assigned that task to her after Peter left. There was a strong consensus among a group of us that um, there were, weren't gonna be any volunteers to be recording secretary. So we expanded Tara's um, executive secretary position to include taking minutes of the meeting. So um, Tara, you should note that Sean Keene is here representing um, um, the, the ACMI. The, ACMI, thank you. Yeah, so um, Lillian commented that she's just visiting. Okay, and then yeah. Seltzer is um, a citizen of the town, so he, he's also an attendant. 
Um, th thank you, William. Um, so, Arif, um, you're on the communication side. Would you like to make some comments? Yes, and I would like to show my presentation. May I share that? How somebody has to give me access, or what? How does that work? One sec. Yeah, sure. One second here. Let's see. All right, why don't you give it a try now, Arif? It works, yes, thank you. I can do it. Can you see this? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. So, all right, welcome to a new year. And uh, the communications committee, the working group, unfortunately, we lost M squared. So <laughs> we, need, we need M squared is Mary Margaret. My fondness for her gave her that special name. But, uh, and if you are willing to help, uh, we would love to have you, but uh, no pressure at all, Mary Margaret, but okay. um, at any time. But uh, we are, uh, Alan, McKay, and me are the, are the members at, uh, in this group. And uh, I can send this around so you can have all the details here as well. Um, and certainly your name here. So the two new members, we would love to have you participate, Wanda and Sophie. And I was going to reach out to you in any case, as you'll see in the next slide. So let me get to the next slide. The major initiatives we are working on, or we will be working on. One is recruiting. We are very happy. It's uh, We've got Wanda on board, Precinct 18, Sophie, Precinct 8 representative, and uh, maybe I have a typo there. Shoot, that's cleared. Uh, member at large. Uh, Tara, welcome. Executive Secretary. So welcome to all. We still have Precinct 7 open. My conversation with Charlie over the weekend mentioned, he mentioned to me that he's interviewing a prospective member. If that falls through, then we'll ramp up our efforts. And uh, Charlie, have you been able to close on that one yet? Or Not yet, not yet. Fair enough. So what do we want to do? We've got some really good action items here. So let's act on it in the sense that we've got new members. So let's do press releases. Um, for the new member announcements, Wanda, Sophie, Tara, and I will ask uh, all three of them to write up a little press release of their own and, and submit it to us so that we can then do a once over. Maybe uh, it'll help me with less heavy lifting on my end, but you know yourselves guys. So write a little bit and pump it up and we are excited to have you. So of course I will give you guidance and I'll reach out to you all directly as well. Um, and then we are also going, so these are just basically I've listed four different types of press releases that we plan on doing. This was in discussion with uh, our leader here, Charlie. So um, appointing authority, we want to put out another press release which talks about the reappointments on the Arlington Finance Committee, the new ones, the reappointments and the changes, something titled to the extent of reappointing authority makes X number of reappointments, et cetera. All of this is to get us in the in the forefront, get the town to know about us, because I don't think they do. And it's important that they do, especially with what's coming down the pike in terms of various increases and so forth. Another important component is that the FinCom handbook has been uh, developed uh, by our very team here. Al Tosti, of course, is the leader of that, and then others. Um, so once it's ready, please let us know. We'd like to make a PR announcement and make it available for download so that people can ha have it, understand it, read it, and then perhaps be tested on it. The last part is a joke, but anyway, <laughs> we should all certainly read it. Um, just uh, finally, just uh, if I can interrupt for one second, um, Arif, uh, Al is the, Al is the uh, father and editor of the ATFC handbook, but, but uh, Christine and her group are actually developing the Arlington Finance Committee handbook. There are two handbooks. Oh, sorry. Uh, apologies, Christine. You are the leader. And uh, please, uh, we will put you in uh, in bold letters out there. So uh, yes, please let me know when it's ready and we will put it for download. I'll come to where it will be in any case. Uh, a lot of you guys are working on um, various reports and uh, please alert us, please alert this group when these reports are available so that we can uh, we can get that PR out there so that people are aware and can download them and, and, and we uh, again um, you know get to acknowledge they can get to acknowledge the work that we're doing 
that brings me to the next topic, the town website. I do need to discuss this with uh, Annie and her group uh, in terms of our website. It's pretty incorrect, needs an update and all the rest. And we would love to have that. Um, we thought about a couple of areas that we should add. Uh, one being uh, new sections, one of them is news. In that sub area, we can place PR announcements in addition to, of course, putting PR announcements to various other, um, you know, Arlington uh, newsletters, Facebook, uh, et cetera. Another one is reports, so another sub area for us to place various reports and so forth. So um, I'll get together with uh, Annie and her team and figure out how to best work on that one. Finally, uh, yes, I mentioned this already. Uh, so Wanda, Sophie, join us if uh, you'd like. Uh, just a little pressure, not too much. But that's it. That's what I have. And uh, and thank you for listening. Any comments? Yeah. Anybody have any questions for Arif? I, I don't have a question, but Arif, I think that probably um, either you and I or you and Alan Jones could put your heads together. The person we need to talk to about the website is Joan Roman. And I think we just need to go in with a concise set of requests and see what we can do about it. Very good. So, Alan is uh, in the Venn diagram is an intersection with my group and your group. So Alan, it's all yours, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, thanks for that. Okay. Yeah, of course. Anybody has any questions and wants to reach out, we're all, we're all one big happy family. So let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Arif. So, um, <clears throat> Al Tasti is leading an effort on uh, what we call operations research. And this is um, sort of modeled after the uh, report that Christine and Jonathan and Daryl did last year on the Arlington Police Department with the idea of doing a deep dive in different town activities in town focus group uh, departments to determine you know, how they work, uh, what the financing implications are, um, what um, what's good about them, what's not so good about them, et cetera. And uh, so Al, do you wanna give us a little update on the operations research effort, please? Sure. Um, we do, we, we've met several times. Uh, we focused, decided uh, to focus on trash. And so we're putting together, and are probably 80 to 90% there, uh, a, a one-page spreadsheet, which tried, tries to bring in all the costs and uh, revenues from one of the major uh, town services, the disposal of trash. Um, so people can see uh, the cost of disposing of trash, uh, the amounts that go uh, that go up to the North Andover uh, Center uh, to be burned, the amounts uh, tonnage that goes into recycling, uh, or the town sometimes likes to call it its diversion, and uh, uh, and does this diversion or recycling, you know, how much money it saves us? Uh, so we put together this working with Sandy. Uh, Peter Howard has been working with the recycling coordinator, um, and uh, we've gone through several iterations. Myself, uh, Dave McKenna, Dean uh, Carmen, and uh, Brian, uh, who is not here uh, tonight. Uh, he's out in the middle of Arizona, Arizona in the desert, uh, but he'll be back. Uh, so anyway, it should be, uh, we're having another meeting next week, and uh, I think it's next week. Uh, so hopefully that'll all be ready uh, to be added to the uh, uh, finance committee uh, report when it's ready. Uh, one page chart and, an, uh, and maybe a, a, a page of text. Um, I might assign that to Dean. He, he doesn't know that yet though. So don't tell him. Uh, so, so that's been our deep dive. Um, there's been a, there's a couple other things I'd, I'd like to mention. Uh, on, uh, I'm also the uh, liaison to the Association of Town Finance Committees. Um, the statewide association's handbook was updated last uh, spring and summer. 
Uh, I believe it's been sent to Sophie uh, and to uh, Wanda. So hopefully you have that already. There'll be a test uh, in two weeks. Uh, so, so please have it memorized. Uh, and uh, I've also reviewed the Arlington Handbook uh, and, and that the people who did that did an excellent job. So it's, it's uh, I think the two will complement each other. Uh, the, uh, the Arlington Handbook, I think, uh, goes into the website. The statewide handbook only goes to FinCom members. Um, not quite sure how we do it, but it's, it's for dues paying members. Um, and I'd like to, uh, um, and so every, everybody should have a copy of, of the new handbook. Uh, if you don't, please uh, um, ask Tara about it so she can distribute it out. Um, and one thing, I was gonna mention this and Mary Margaret's still online. Uh, I just wanted to mention this um, to her, but uh, Mary Margaret, Peter Howard and John Deist, uh, they, they probably are on since the 80s. Uh, they're three of the longest serving finance committee members uh, on the committee, probably with the exception of Charlie and myself. Uh, and uh, for many, many years throughout the uh, 90s and into 2000s, the finance committee had a booth at Town Day. And we had volunteers. So uh, Dan Dunn provided the canopy to keep us out of the sun. Uh, Joe Connors uh, provided the table, uh, which my wife and I every picked up every Saturday morning. And Mary Margaret provided everything else. Uh, we'd sw swing by her house and we'd pick up all the tables and, and knickknacks and had everything spread out. Uh, and then we had, uh, uh, you know, Peter was always there for one shift. Uh, Charlie was there. John Dice was there. Alan Jones was there. We'd always have a bunch of people. So we'd have at least two people on three shifts. And uh, uh, Mary Margaret was always the one who, you know, had everything equipped and all ready for us to go. So I want to thank uh, you for all your work you've done over these last, God, 20, 30 years. And uh, it, I've always appreciated that, your efforts, you and John Dice dealing with some of the most complex budgets, really, because you got involved with the enterprise funds. And yeah. Uh, they, they, they were always a little bit of a challenge, actually a big challenge on that. And uh, I wish Peter was here to say all the good work he did on the, uh, on the minutes. Uh, th that was a great job he did. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is just a couple other things I wanted to mention. Thank you. Thank you. Th thank you, Al. Uh, Al, I have a question while you're speaking. Do you have any insight as to when the, uh, the ATFC meeting is going to be this year? Uh, well, that, that's a constant uh, issue. We did have the meeting in November. Our The ATFC uh, for our new members is the Association of Town Finance Committees. It's the statewide group. Uh, it works in conjunction with the Mass Municipal Association. Uh, it has an annual meeting every October, November, uh, usually in a central part of the state where we'd have any place from 150 to uh, well, 100 to 150 members in attendance. Obviously, over the last two years, that had to be virtual. Uh, so, so that was done. We've got another meeting scheduled in, I believe, uh, excuse me, just a sec. I don't see, uh, here it is, uh, on April 30th, uh, it's scheduled in Oxford, which is a uh, middle part of the state, Worcester County, um, on April 30th in person. Now, whether that'll actually happen or not, I don't know. Um, it, I, 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 I am as long as, as I'm sure everybody else wants to get back to in-person meetings, uh, but there will be meetings periodically. Um, but that's what we've got scheduled so far. Uh, whether it ends up to be an in-person meeting, I, I'm not sure. Thank you, Al. It's good information. So, um, 
John, uh, you're, you're our delegate to the Capital Planning Committee. Can you give us a little insight on what's going on there and what the outlook is? Certainly, thank you, Charlie. Um, uh, the Capital Planning Committee has been working diligently since September in developing the capital budget for fiscal year 23 and the capital plan for uh, fiscal years 24, 5, 6, and 7. Um, um, that work is, the bulk of the work is, is done. The, the, the budget and the plan are, are fairly complete. And now the uh, Capital Planning Committee has turned its attention to working on its presentation to the Finance Committee, um, which I believe has been um, scheduled for March 7th, our hearings on March 7th. Um, Tara, did I get that date right? That's correct, yes. Okay, great. And that's that's basically the, the news. You'll you'll get the full details of, of uh, the the uh, proposed budget and plan um, on March seventh. Thank you, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Christine on the policy committee, can you give us your uh, brief view? By the way, I I have looked at that uh, Arlington Finance Committee handbook, and I think it's fantastic. So, oh, great. Uh, sure. So um, we were tasked with um, this was a twofold, a, a two-part endeavor. I think we were tasked with compiling um, in one reference all of how we do business, all of our policies, procedures, um, um, important laws, statutes, regulations that we have to follow, uh, things that we've just developed over the years or decades, and how we go about um, the budget review process and, and, and um, preparing a report for town meeting. Um, really all of our historical knowledge, that was um, what our aim was to put it in one reference. Um, and um, so we, we met, I would say about maybe nine or 10 times since last March, I think. Um, and what we did is we, um, each took uh, various sections and drafted them, and then we would get together and we would exchange them and then we would talk about them, and then we would think uh, better about what we did and we would improve it, and then we would go off again and revise and write and come back again. And um, it took uh, it was a bit of a work, a bit of a, a job. And uh, recently we got to the point where we think we're close. Of being final. I don't think what we have now is the final final product because we think we were thinking we needed more input from others. And um, one of the things that we wanted was Al Tosti's uh, input um, because he's certainly, um, as he said, worked on the APFC handbook. And this is supposed to be an adjunct, not a replacement for the ATFC handbook. Um, and Al gave us great feedback and we incorporated his revisions and changes and questions and comments. And uh, at this point, we feel like we all want you to look at it uh, and then get back to us with what is, what, what, what are we missing or what isn't clear? Um, so we want your feedback. You can, uh, you can get um, see a copy of it in our SharePoint files. Um, and once we have all that, I think we'll get together again and, and really finalize it. Uh, and then we're going to be work. Then we're going to quickly segue to our next job, which is now that we have um, compiled what it is that we do, we want to start thinking about what can we change, or what should we change, what policies, what procedures have we been doing that could be improved upon. Um, so once the handbook is, is finalized. We're going to move on to that next task. Um, Shane, Annie, Al, Jones, have I left anything else? Nope. Well, I'd just like to emphasize that it's, at this point, it's a living document, uh, and we really encourage feedback. Uh, FAQs, anything that we, there, there's so much oral history and oral tradition in the finance committee, we don't want to try to record all of this. So, uh, especially the new and newish members, if there are things that um, 
basically every time you ask a question, we'd like to answer it in, in uh, the, this addendum to the Finance Committee Handbook. So um, please feel free with feedback and recommendations and suggestions. One thing I can't remember, uh, Christine or Al, do we include like as an appendix, the uh, sections in the Town Manager Act and the bylaws on the Finance Committee, you know, verbatim? We don't, but that's a good point. We do reference them in the text, uh, but I guess it would be a good idea to have as a, in an appendix. Them. No, I, I think it's always good to actually, you know, have the original text there. And it's not like it's that long, so I don't think it will be a huge effort. Good suggestion. We'll, we'll do that. Okay, thank you, Christine. Any other comments or questions before Christine? So, um, Dean, uh, you want to make some uh, bring, bring us up to date on the uh, budget uh, reporting rationalization? It's a, yeah. it's a complex word, but the the basic thing is the is the idea that um, we'd like to see the town give us um, accurate historical and comparative information in the budget book. Yeah. So there there are few things. Can I share my screen? Because I'll probably like cut the time to explain it down. You should um, be able to share. Awesome. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. Super duper. Okay. So the, the first thing we did is we, it's a discussion with the town about what, I know it sounds silly, but what does actual mean or, or what is the period that we're measuring actuals? And it appeared that we came across a Sort of a disconnect of what I think the finance committee we always thought the columns were doing versus what they were doing. And in short, um, this column here, which is the second out year for actuals, prior to this year, it didn't what what it what they what the town did was it they didn't they weren't putting so anything that carried forward. So like let's say fiscal 2021 doesn't have carry forwards in it because the year ended on June 30. They did the close and that was it. So any money that's carried forward on this budget hasn't been spent, can't show up here. We haven't had enough time. But they were then taking these numbers the following year, putting here, which means any money from, let's say, the FY 2020 budget that was then spent in the carry forward year never showed up in this out column here. And so what, what they changed to this year is at the out column here, FY 2020, is all of the money that was spent within the budget 2020 period, plus any money that was carried forward into 21 and spend it, spent in the carry forward period, which amazingly enough was what we, we, I think it's what we always thought was in there. I think there was, along the way, I think there was a miscommunication and it kind of got cut to the way they were doing it. So that should be very helpful because one of the things that we've seen, or I think has been frustrating, is when these numbers sort of jump all across the board, right? Like you'd have a number, let's say in the first column, that would be 5,000, and then the next column would be 5,000, and then the budget said 10,000. I was like, well, if you only spent 5,000 for two years, why do you need 10? And the answer was, well, we carried forward money, and you're not seeing the carry forward that we spent in our subsequent year. So that should cure that issue um the second one and i think it's um probably hopefully it'll be helpful to to everyone is when i was talking to sandy in the during the um in the fall we were talking about the budget process and some of the pain points that committee members have some of the pain points that department heads have and and the big one i came up to is i i sort of explained you know the budget, our budget review is at its core is a, is a fluctuation analysis, right? Or a trend analysis. We look at spending over several years. And if we see a change, we, we ask a question about it. And sometimes we might miss it. Sometimes we won't. I mean, there could be some follow-ups, but, but generally that's how it works, right? Like what's in this budget? What's in the line item? Why did it change from prior year? And I said it'd be very helpful if we had sort of clarity on, on big fluctuations so we wouldn't have to keep going back and forth on it. And so on this page here, which is page 13 of the budget book, what Sandy endeavored to do was be very clear on some of the big changes, right? And, and it looks, it's actually pretty helpful. So for example, um, 
you know, he says DPW, an increase of 275.37 due to a new three years recycling slash solid waste hauling contract, right? So remember the number 275.37, you hit control F, you type in solid waste, click forward for a couple buttons, boom, look at that. You come to the solid waste budget. And when you come to the solid waste budget, you notice that the budget increased by 230.550 right there, and it increased by 249.87. And so it starts to give you that, that, that parent page 13, a pretty good lead as to what's going on in the budget. Now that doesn't mean we're not gonna ask questions of the department head, that doesn't mean we're not gonna do any further research, but it really kind of is a, is a great jumping off point. Likewise, um, let me show you this here, right? So he, here it's it. they talk about all of the money that they receive from ARPA fundings and how there's some one-time positions. So I'll go right into the middle here. There's a community outreach coordinator under the diversity, diversity, equity, inclusion division. So again, I hit control F, I write community outreach, right? Now, so the amount here says 54216. I let it fly forward. I'm in the DEI division and there's 54216 over here. And that's pretty helpful, right? Because if, if when we go through the budget, you start to say, okay, well, this, if, as, Many of you have been on the committee for several years. No, this column on the far left is who held the position before, right? And then this column, there's an FY22 column that shows the amount of, amount of money last year. So the question I think normally would be asked by the committee is we have a vacant position, community outreach coordinator. It wasn't funded in FY22. It's now budget for 54216. What, what is it, right? And that just, it's just a very helpful way to sort of pick off some of those really easy sort of, I'm gonna call them low hanging questions that are, like everyone's gonna ask right away. And so hopefully when you, um, when you start digging deep into the budget, if you haven't already, um, just spend some time on this page, budget book, page five, page 13 on the PDF and understand what, how they, you know, the big change, the change, big changes that they documented for us. So that's the, um, those are the first, um, Two things we talked about, like for the past to get the book in front of you. The third thing that we're, we're talking about in, and hopefully um, it will lead to some fruit in sort of stopping the madness of all the spreadsheets that we have, um, is I started to talk to Ida, Ida Cody, you know, about the budget in the Munis system. So as, as you can all guess, you know, one of the core functions of a, of a municipal comptroller is to make sure that the departments don't overspend their budgets. One of the key tools they do, they use, is when the budget is passed by town meeting, they put the physical budget, they put the budget actually into the Munis system, and then they can sort of show it, not sort of, but they show it declining balance, right? So if, if there's a department with a hundred thousand dollar budget, they load in a hundred thousand, and then when the actual, let's say they spent five thousand, five thousand dollar invoice goes in, shows a balance remaining of ninety five thousand and so on and so forth until the full budget is expended. So the question I have is, you know, it looks like Munis has the capability to just put the budget in now, like before it's even passed, like this functionality to say, you know, budget submitted to the legislative body, any changes made, final budget passed. And by doing that, the question becomes, if we have the budget in Munis, can we then do reporting on it that would alleviate the need to then have to generate many of the spreadsheets that we have, whether it's, you know, the spreadsheets that Sandy gives to us in our budget book, which he, which are just separately keyed in to Excel, the, 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 which then Alan Jones has to put into his work in Excel. And, and how can we really make this more efficient? And so I had sent her an email and I did, you know, in mid-January, followed up with her again, and, and hopefully we'll get going on trying to understand if we, you know, essentially run it in parallel this season. What, what we could get out of it for the future that would alleviate all of the spreadsheet crunching that goes on. So that's what I got. Thank you, Dean. Very helpful. Any questions for Dean? I have one. Um, invariably at town meeting, there's a couple of eagle eyes that look at the prior 
year's finance committee report and the current year's finance committee report to see what the differences are. Uh, is this a uh, new change, which appears to be useful, going to create um, erroneous questions at, at, the, at, the, at the town meeting? So I thought about that. And if I remember correctly, the finance committee book doesn't put actuals in. The finance committee book simply rolls budgets, budget years back. And that's true. Yeah. And and I have to be honest, it's it's interesting. We I, I'm gonna blank, I'm I'm blanking out. Um the the way it's the way it got changed to for this year is the same way that Nancy Gal 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 Galkowski, I'm blanking out, God, I'm missing Yeah, that's her name, yeah, Galkowski, yeah. It it's the way, it's the way she always delivered it to us. Yeah. It just, it's just somewhere between Nancy and now it got switched that any carried over funds didn't go into that line item. And okay. so we should be in good shape. Good, thank you. Okay, and then, um, We've, we had uh, several meetings of uh, the Long Range Planning Committee recently. Um, <clears throat> and in the uh, manager's budget book is the latest uh, version of the Long Range Plan. Uh, and Christine and, and Al are on the uh, Long Range Planning Committee along with me. Uh, Christine and Al, do you wanna make some comments on that or observations? Well, I was wondering, Charlie, just you know, again, for, for people who aren't quite so familiar with it, Maybe you could just say what the Long Range Planning Committee is, uh, what the product is, and how it relates to the Budget and Revenue Task Force and the Revenue Task Force, and, and us. Uh, okay, I have to add a few hours onto the agenda. Just no, the, the two minute version. <laughs> uh, so, okay, the, <clears throat> that's a good that's a good point. So the uh, you'll notice in the in the um, town managers. A budget book, there's a page that has a five-year projection. And um, we we moved into this five-year planning mode around 2005 um, <clears throat> when we when we had a um, we had an override, a uh, fairly substantial override. Charlie, I'll share my screen so we can see that what you're talking about. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. So um, the, the basic uh, problem that the town was facing prior to 2005 was that uh, because of the difference, basically the town was spending more money than it was taking in under Proposition 2.5 with the limitation of a 2.5% tax increase um, every year, 2.5% plus new growth. And the result was um, there was sort of a fiscal crisis that occurred uh, in connection with some of the union contracts, especially in the school system, where uh, if people were going to be terminated, they had to be notified um, well in advance of the start of the next school year. And many times the governor's budget with the, and, or the, uh, you know, the latest version of state aid wasn't final until probably July or August. You know, they're supposed to be finished by June 30th and, and the, and the legislature really, really does that. So um, <clears throat> we got into this mode of, of issuing pink slips to, I don't know, a substantial number of teachers and then other people in the town based on incomplete um, financial information. So the uh, plan was to, in order to meet the deficit, to have uh, ask the voters to, to uh, pay, pay a higher amount of money in taxes, but to pay more than to just meet the deficit for the current fiscal year, to, to try to meet it for three or four or five years out by having an excess in the tax increase and then putting that into a reserve fund. And that reserve fund is shown here, uh, it's called the override stabilization fund on the bottom of the sheet. So as when this number is positive, I mean, when, when, the, uh, when, the, when the amount that has been voted in the override is greater than the deficit, this, this uh, override stabilization fund is increased. And, and then as the expenses start to get catch up to the size of the revenue, money is taken out of this override stabilization fund to avoid a deficit. 
and and consequently you can go an extended period of time before having an actual deficit. So you see in the in the first several years in this chart, it's balanced at zero. And then in fiscal 25, we have a deficit. And then fiscal uh, 26, there's a bigger deficit, et cetera. So eventually, the town has to come up with either raising taxes to cover this, this deficit or reducing expenses by a significant amount. So that's what this, um, this long range planning uh, group, the long range planning committee, discusses the strategies of how to, um, how to plan the, the long range budget from a top down and a bottoms up viewpoint. And it includes uh, the town manager, the superintendent of schools, representative of the finance committee, the capital planning committee, um, um, the board of selectmen, the assessor, and the, uh, the treasurer and um, comptroller. I think I might have hit them all, but uh, that's roughly the, the membership. This and and it's it, it it usually meets three or four times a year, and then periodically. This group, plus um, other people like all the members of the finance committee um, and, and other people meet in a larger, well, in virtually it's not, not it's a, these are virtual meetings, now, but we used to meet in a larger environment at the town hall and meet with not only the, all of these members, but also with our legislative uh, delegation to make sure that the, um, the, the receipts coming in from state aid met the expectations and if they didn't we would tell them that they didn't and, and what what we expected to have happen or at least um if if it's not wasn't explicitly sort of telling them it was at least uh politely strongly requesting i don't know if that if that's a good enough description but uh, that's the that's really what happens with the long-range planning committee in this five-year uh financial projection so, so, so having said that uh well, let me just add that, um, yeah, so this is sort of the mile high view and looking forward, looking a little bit of history, looking forward. Um, and where we're living is to implement or is to, to make sure this is implemented for FY 2023. So even though there'll be some minor adjustments between now and when town meeting votes on the budgets, uh, by the time the finance committee report is done, our budget should match this column of 50 FY 2023, and this will actually be included as an appendix in the uh, finance committee report. So that's 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 th th those are the numbers that tie us to this five year plan. Christine, I, I think I'll just add the the a couple of the issues that were um, have been discussed at these long range planning committee meetings. Uh, one, um, school funding and uh, what to do with the uh, decreased enrollment um, for, 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 um, for, for new members. We've reached, we had an agreement um, that uh, to address the, the at, at, a few years ago, the booming uh, student enrollment growth in Arlington and the finance committee and the school committee and the town manager, we had agreed on this formula to, to compensate the, the, the schools for um, enrollment beyond what was expected um, in return that if the number ever fell, um, there would be a decrease in, in, in that amount. Uh, I think no one thought COVID was going to happen and that we would have uh, a sharp decline in the student population. So that issue was uh, uh, debated, uh, how, to, how to handle that. Uh, and the other issue was uh, the ARPA money. And uh, more recently, we, we realized we had a little bit more ARPA money coming to us and how, to, how should we spend that? Um, and um, the schools made a very um, cogent argument that they should, that that uh, ARPA money should more ARPA money should go their way uh, to deal with uh, the COVID impact on student uh, population. 
and you can see in the long range plan there was um, uh, an agreement to um, put uh, 970,000 in the FY23 budget and 600,000 in 24 and 300,000 in 25. Uh, what I thought was important um, was that these are one-time payments and they're not, uh, uh, there's a concern that, that they would be uh, added to the, the, the bottom line budget that would just increase over time. So this, this one, these, these funds would be baked into further increases that would skew things. So um, I personally am happy with how, um, that has has been resolved. Um, that's that's all I have to say. I don't know. Al Jones, Al Tosti. Well, you know, you mentioned that this this ten million dollars of ARPA funding up in the revenue section is something the, the the government has sort of said with the ARPA funding, some portion of that can be used for replacement of lost revenue, which if you're a lot of you're getting a lot of meals taxes and hotel taxes are pretty, pretty severe uh, instead of deeply analyzing every city and town or state in the country they just said ah here's a general rule they basically told arlington um we can realize 10 million dollars of the arpa money as lost revenue which means we can use it for pretty much anything we want which is why it's gone in there up with property taxes and such again one-time money but it, it it's giving us a little bit of a pad on the eventual deficit. I think I think we, the initial assumption was 3 million and it was increased to 10 million. So that was that was news. Um, and then the other uh, thing we might wanna look at quickly is what, how, how do we deal with this impending deficit? Uh, we're starting to look at scenarios of uh, different possible overrides and uh, we need something in, in fiscal 24, which means voting for it in uh, next, next April. Um, this scenario is about a 6% uh, increase in property taxes that would probably keep the deficit at bay for three years, uh, an 8% that would keep the deficit at bay for four years, and about 10% keep the deficit at bay for about five years. I believe, if I recall correctly, Charlie challenged the group to say, let's not do anything more than something, increasing the property taxes 10% and make that last five years before the next time we have to go back to the taxpayers. Charlie, if I misquoted you. No, yeah, that's pretty pretty close. Yep. So so this last scenario seems to be within a couple of percentage, you know, within a few dollars, uh, seems to match the, the goal that we gave them, which would be a 10% increase in taxes starting fiscal 24 and not going back for five years, make it last for five years, at least five years. Yeah, and the town has done that before, so there's no reason why we can't do it again. Uh, the because the if we if we wind up going for the three year override plan, we are going to be essentially um, increasing taxes at a probably a uh, eight or nine percent per year basis, which is going to you know it doubles our it doubles our taxes in a very short period of time within ten years, and that's not something that's sustainable. Um, I'd like to just add one one thing. If you could flip back to that prior uh, chart, Alan. The, the Alan longer. highlighted on that chart the 970,000, those three slugs of money, and also noticed um, uh, the line where it says special, I'm sorry, the, where it says growth factor. That growth factor is the, the negative growth factor associated with the drop in the student population as was uh, previously described, I think, by Christine. And um, it's um, while this plan has been um, mutually worked out between the town manager and the superintendent of schools and their staffs, uh, I, I would hesitate to say that it has been embraced by the school committee. So there may yet be strong uh, discussions about how this plan is going to go forward. And, and that can have an effect on, on our budget discussions for this year as well. We'll, we'll see what happens as we, as we move forward. And from, from my, my personal position, I think that the town budget can go down uh, somewhat as well. The, uh, the, the net town revenues are increasing about 
I have a hard time seeing the small print, but I think it was around three to three to three and a quarter percent a year. And I, I'm quite certain three, that they, 3%. Can, yeah, they can get along. Well, it's two, 3.25, I think further out. Yeah. Um, they can actually, and have gotten along at a lower percentage increase than that. And I, likewise, I think the school department can get along on a lower percentage than they've asked for as well. But that's, that's a day for us for another, another day's discussion. And, and by the way, speaking of the school department, um, I have invited our, our superintendent, Dr. Homan, to come uh, and talk to the finance committee on February 9th. Uh, let's see. Tara, what day is that? Do you remember? February I want to say it's the... Uh, it's the 7th. I wanted to say it was the 7th. I'd have to yeah. check. Yeah, okay. It's a Wednesday. It's, a, it's the win a week from this Wednesday. And um, it's not a, just want to emphasize that it's not meant to be a budget discussion, um, but she, this is our new superintendent. Many of you may not have met her. Uh, she's extremely competent and, um, and very articulate and has a very interesting view of the experiences in the, during COVID and also the general situation in our Arlington Public Schools. And I think um, it would be good for her to meet with, you know, talk to some of the people on the finance committee. And it also would be a good experience for the finance committee to hear um, her views uh, firsthand. So we'll have an opportunity to, to hear from her. And this is not to review the budgets. This is sort of a, a high level strategy discussion. Okay. Um, thank you, Alan and Christine. And then finally, uh, Tara. Do you want to make any comments on the SharePoint system and the town email, which I know you've been wrestling with? And I saw uh, an email tonight at five o'clock that says that we're not supposed to use all the good work that you did or Charlie, something to that effect. Charlie, before we move on, can I just say one thing about the- Yeah, go right ahead, Annie. Thank you. Sorry. Um, uh, I think it's important to just step back a little bit and remember that historically what makes the five-year plan work is the leadership's agreement about the parameters that there is a leadership consensus about holding expenses to a certain level, even though there's money in the bank. And that often, particularly when we do an override, there's a set of agreements that are agreed to and advertised to the public in advance. And that's really part of what guides everybody in this decision-making process. And uh, is part of how we, we I don't know, uh, figure out what responsible spending is. I just, I know we've talked all around it in this whole discussion that you guys had, but I think it's worth calling out that those parameters are really important. That once we've made that agreement, sold it to the public, passed an override, we all have to live within those agreements. I, I think you're absolutely right, Annie. And it reminds me, uh, wasn't there a famous psychologist? I don't think it was Young, uh, maybe Adler, that has a this philosophy of um, delayed gratification, right, is part of a mature individual and can also be part of a mature social structure. And, yes. and the five-year plan is all about delayed gratification. So you're saying it's like the marshmallow test? <laughs> <laughs> For adults. <laughs> Charlie? Yes. It's Dean. Can I make one comment? Yeah, please. Operation? So during the long range planning process, I, I, I don't go to the meetings because I review the school budget and they have all their budget subcommittee meetings in public. So they talk about what they're going to talk about at long range planning. So it seems kind of like dishonest for me to then go. Um, but I have to be honest, having seen sort of both sides of it, like listened quietly sort of with my camera off at long range planning and gone to the school department. I do want to say that I think the chair and vice chairs of our committee did an excellent job. Like they did a really good job and they, um, they took on the tough challenges and, and they sort of, they, they worked through it. And, and the big one I, I would say and point out is um, the school committee knows that a deal's a deal when it comes to enrollment growth. So what goes up and comes down gets adjusted. But the challenge in front of them was like, what type of cut or reduction in student growth do they agree to? And like, you know, I'm fairly sure that no member of a school committee has ever gotten reelected after proposing cutting a budget, right? Um, and so their, their position kind of ends up being like silence in a way, even though they know what's inevitable, right? 
they're kind of silent on any any reduction. And I thought that the chair and the vice chairs did a very good job of sort of steering the discussion to saying, okay, these are the mechanics. These are how the numbers work. It's going down. If it comes up, we'll do this. And, and, and they kind of got to that point where, or they got us to that point where we had consensus, we had agreement, and the finance committee did in the end, or its leadership did in the end, what our job is, right? Our job sometimes is unelected or appointed people who, re- who present a budget to the um, full-time meeting is to, is to facilitate those really hard discussions among elected members who really like, it, it's tough for them to get there, right? Because that's not what you run for. And so, like I said, I think um, having seen it from both sides, I think Charlie, Alan, Alan and Christine did an excellent job. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Well, I think um, I think the manager and the superintendent also also grabbed the bull by the horn, so to speak. So they they did a good job as well. Okay, um, uh, Tara, uh, did you want to make any comments on where we are with the point from an operational viewpoint and and e- e- email and so forth? Um, well, um, thank you, Alan, to Alan Jones um, for all the work he put into that. And, and anyone else who helped um, with the system. Um, one note is um, just a reminder for anyone sending emails. Um, if you are sending an email and you're using your personal email, just to make sure that you copy your town email address. Um, and then uh, another note is um, we had thought that we were going to be able to use a distribution list um, that's kind of housed within Microsoft, but it seems that we, we may not be able to do that until um, the town fully moves over to Microsoft and off of the uh, mailer daemon uh, system. So um, that's just kind of the update there. Um, and that's, that's kind of it on that, unfortunately. All right, well, well thank you, Tara. I, I saw your email today. I'm going to try to catch up with you to discuss that a little bit more, the discussion that you had with Syed. And um, I'm not in agreement with his position, obviously, but um, we'll see what we can do about that. I have to admit, this is very frustrating. This is the first time I've worked on a Microsoft 365 system where I didn't have super admin powers. Uh, so having to go back to Tara and say, I'm sorry, I can't do that <laughs> is very frustrating. Yeah. Okay, um, so we're, I, I think we don't have minutes for approval uh, tonight, um, but we will have the last meeting's minutes for approval at the Wednesday night meeting. Um, and so if, if we drop those off the agenda, we're just about five minutes behind um, where we plan to be. So um, last spring or maybe early summer, um, John Ellis wrote an, wrote me an email suggesting that uh, we could possibly increase our efficiency and knowledge in, in doing various um, uh, departmental meetings by ha- having a general budget review uh, of the budgets before we go into our departmental meeting um, sessions, okay? And uh, so I sent, I sent this thought out to you a couple of days ago with an email along with a um, uh, sort of a policy or a little little protocol statement developed by by Christine and Arif and um, Annie on how how we might approach this, and and I so I strongly encourage you to read that and think about it. But basically, what we're, what the, the intention here is to get us all familiar with what's going on and not but not necessarily to um, to uh, abrogate any responsibilities to dig into the details of the budget interview the uh, department managers carefully and come back with detailed um, subject matter expertise in each of the departments to present to the um, finance committee. So with that preface, um, I'd like to try to start that that whole uh, period, uh, that whole that pr- uh, cycle. So, uh, and I, what I would like to see here is that the uh, senior person in each of these budget sections that's working uh, on the, when I say senior, I mean persons that is, is most involved in the particular budgets, um, lead our discussion and, and brief review of, of the budget uh, tonight, you know, without having yet spoken with the, with the um, department managers. 
And, and, uh, and then the Finance Committee, if anybody wants to bring up any questions or whatever, or has comments to make about those budgets, uh, for that Finance Committee member, this is the time to do it. So um, maybe, Alan, I was noticing that you are really facile with uh, the, the town manager's budget uh, book and, and uh, um, Adobe Acrobat. So maybe you could be the, uh, the, the screen driver as we cycle through the various budgets. And I think what we'll wind up doing here is um, probably the budgets one to three are uh, Dave McKenna and, and Sophie. So I think if you could get those budgets up there and David, if you could bring us through those budgets with a couple of words on each one and people can ask questions and if there are none, they'll just move on to the next set of budgets. How does that sound? And, and you don't have to worry about the screen because uh, Alan Jones is gonna manage it. Okay. <clears throat> so Alan, can you put up uh, budget one? You're on mute. Uh, it's coming. Okay. Oh. Go ahead, David. Okay, the, the first budget we have is um, our own budget, the Finance Committee. And it's, it's ba basically, it's the salaries. Does anybody have any questions about, the, uh, about that? Okay, hearing none, we can move on to the next budget. Um, again, one of the issues on, on the, the, the select board that I, I think everybody should know is included in um, a separate section in, in their budget in years past has been the cost of the town elections. That was under the control of the Board of Selectmen. This year, it has now been transferred over to the clerk's office, the entire um, budget. And it's, it's in... Uh, Let's say it's a work in progress as as we speak. So, but that uh, election budget, if you're looking for it, it's now in the budget book on page sixty. But it comes under the clerk is one of the responsibilities of the clerk rather than uh, the select board. Does anybody have any questions on that? Who made that decision? Um, I. As far as I know, I, I found find these things out by <clears throat> um, sometimes by accident, uh, and um, apparently there, there has been a, a discussion for quite some time, uh, and it started back to the prior clerk as to um, why the election budget itself was under the board of selectmen, and if you do the history on it, you find out that many years ago, um, when the board of selectmen I think you just went silent on us, David. So, um, and, and as the history went on, they just kept it there. But in uh, the, the last recent years, it, it seemed, wait a minute, um, we have one section hiring the people that work in, in the polls, but on election day, the clerk is responsible for the election. So, so it became, and what added to the mix was actually early voting. <clears throat> early voting is what uh, caused the big change. And, okay. and I guess we all know it is still in, um, in flux. <clears throat> okay. Got it. So, so that's why we have it. That's why it's on page 60, but it, uh, it comes under the clerk's responsibility, just like the board of registrars does as well. Okay. That's uh, budget uh, two, right? Um, uh, budget three. We have some questions, Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Micaiah, Christine, well, Micaiah first. Uh, I, I think John John Micaiah and then Christine maybe. 
Oh, Ron, okay. sorry. I, unfortunately, I can't, don't, can't see all of the uh, boxes at the same time when I'm looking at the screen. John, go right ahead. Thanks. The things I would be interested to know more about, Dave, um, yes. are related to, to the salaries and particularly job descriptions. Um, you know, I think there's maybe going to be some staff turnover. Some of the job titles are kind of, uh, um, I don't know, dated, dated. clerk typists. Um, and as the town integrates with more uh, IT kinds of uh, responsibilities for all of the staff, um, you know, will these job descriptions change and will, um, will that have a budget implications? So I'm just interested in, in um, you know, staffing and um, how those job descriptions might change and, and what the plans are around that. That would be something I'd be interested to know. Are you asking both for the for the clerks as well as the select board? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, no, no. The the thing you have up right now, the select board. Um. Okay. Pre presently in the select board, <clears throat> there are two people working in the office. There is one out on a sick leave, that being the executive director. And what they're doing presently is because of the virus, only one person works in the office. They alternate day by day. That 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 was a, an order put out by the select board themselves, as they only wanted one of their staff working in the office. So, like I was saying earlier, everything's in flux, and a lot of it has to do with the virus. So, um, what, uh, David, I think what I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, but I think what John was saying is that, and, and maybe you can coordinate this a little bit with Micaiah, but um, the the uh, you have a board administrator, you have an office manager, and you have an administrative assistant. Yes. Um, what What are the job descriptions? How do they differ? And um, and then the principal clerk and typist. And you know, is that still an operating, um, you know, useful definition? We don't need to answer that tonight, but I think that's what he, he was trying to draw your attention. Well, actually, that that would come under the personnel. Um, That's why I say if you yeah. can coordinate that with Makaya, I'm sure she can sort through that. Yeah, if, if, we, if we could find out the job descriptions, uh, I, but I, I could check with, with the board itself. Um, they might have written job descriptions right there in their office. Yeah. So okay, but I, will, I will check on that. Makaya? Excellent. Thank you. This is Makaya. Um, I will be happy to follow up with um, the HR director about that as well. Um, just okay. to get um, but my question, um, you connected the, the issue about cost of the town elections with yes. the fact that the budget got moved from select board to the clerk's office. So yes. I'm, um, I'm curious about why you made that connection about cost. Um, is, is there a benefit to moving it to, um, to the clerk's office? I, I, um, well, again, I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was mentioning that some of this is in, in, um, it's a work in progress. The, the clerk is looking at the possibility of um, how many employees do they really need to have in, in, a, in an election based upon what type of election it is. That's one thing. The other thing is, it's the coordination um, of, the, um, of the election people that work. Um, it, presently, we have 21 precincts we don't have 21 locations, so they, they, they want to find out whether um, if they can save um, uh, some money by combining precincts. That has been discussed with the board of selectmen. Uh, that's still, I think, I think they decided to keep what they have now. However, there might be a possibility that they're going to close a precinct not the precinct, but just move the precinct itself to a to a to a location where, where you'd have three precincts located in one location. So that's like I say, it's all in flux. As far as saving money, in my view, and I could be wrong, I don't think they're going to save a lot of money um, under the present way they're doing it. And the unknown factor is early elections. It takes a lot of personnel to run the early elections. And it's up to the state how many days it's going to run. Last time it was eight for the primary, 10 for the regular election. 
The time before that, it was 14. So that's still in flux. So the money, the dollar value is also in flux as far as what you're going to pay your workers. And number two, don't forget that the state of Massachusetts, their minimum wage, it went up again this year as of January 4th, 1st, to $14.25. It's going to go up next year to $15 an hour. So that's also in flux too. So do I have a direct uh, answer to your question? No, but it, I, it, it is in flux. And I, and I will be asking these questions to the town clerk when we meet with her. Thank you, David. Christine? Um, select board expenses advertising. I, I'm just curious as to why the bump in the advertising expense, that's all. Um, <clears throat> likewise, uh, Christine, that's a question I wanted to ask because when I looked at that budget, that, that got my attention real quick. And I, I want to know what, what the situation there is. So I, I'll be asking that question. Sophie? So, um, so I'll be working on these with David, but so I don't really have a question as much as far as a comment for everyone uh, since it came up with, with John's comments earlier. In looking at all of these that everybody's working on, I calculated that there are about, not including police and fire, 25 vacancies in town um, in the personnel. So I'm really interested in everybody's budgets, ours included, of figuring out sort of, um, is this all COVID related? Are they actively seeking um, people for these 25 positions? Are the salaries appropriate that are in the budget as far as minimum wage or even like everything, everybody is getting bumps and pay these days um, with inflation, et cetera. So are these really, uh, their numbers are advertising for just across the board for all these vacancies in town? Great, I think that's something that we should be looking at. Good point. Al Tosti. I, I, I just had two observations. One is if we're shifting a major responsibility away from the Board of Selectmen's office, uh, we, we shouldn't perhaps need as much administrative help there because they're no longer hiring people. They're no longer uh, uh, admit, uh, supervising. Um, so, so my guess is we might see it in, increase requested in the clerk's office to supervise all this. Uh, I'd like to make sure that there's an equivalent reduction in the selector's office to compensate. So that's one observation. The second is, and we probably can't do this yet, we could save a ton of money if we went just to mail by, uh, vote by mail and, and just eliminate all the precincts with, with maybe the exception of the town hall, but that, that's uh, for future discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Al. I, I can't see all the uh, boxes here. Does anybody else have a question? I, I, if I could just <clears throat> comment on uh, Al's uh, comment. Go ahead. David. According to my knowledge, it's the state that determines by, by virtue of how many voters you have or how many citizens you have, registered voters, how many precincts you're going to have. So the, 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 there's a, if someone would, would want to put it down to, um, you could have one location, but in that location, you have to, might have to have multiple precincts. So if one were to change that, you'd have to form, um, you'd have to get, get the legislature to modify that, that, that law. Thanks, thank you, David. Any, any other questions on the select board budget? I can't see any hands. Uh, John has his hand up. Oh, John? Um, sorry. Yeah. Am I unmuted? Okay. So, um, I, I just wanted to say that sort of what I was hoping to do by this process that we're doing, um, is to, uh, unearth questions that might come up when we actually discuss the budget rather than discuss the budgets twice. Um, so I'm hoping that we can just kind of brainstorm, get the questions out. Um, to avoid the scenario where we're halfway through a budget and somebody has a really good question um, and then we have to table discussion about that or we vote on it in 16 to zero, uh, but we say, well, we're really concerned about this question. So as we go through these, Charlie, and I don't want to step on your toes, it, you know, it, I'm, I'm just sort of phrasing what, what I had envisioned um, that 
let's just throw out all the questions. Let's not discuss it so that the people who are, when they're talking to the budget heads can ask the good questions. And then when the time comes to, to really, you know, to chew on this stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll have that feedback. So that was my only comment. Thank you, John. So uh, David, let's move on to budget three. Anybody have any questions or comments on the town manager's budget? Um, Charlie? Yes. This is Wanda. Wanda. I, was, yes. I just wanted to follow on what John kind of said because I, I went over this was during the snowstorm. I read the, all the budgets and got very eyed, but I made notes on all of them. And I wondered if there's a mechanism to just send in the questions that the people doing the investigation can take with them or you know or not as well because i don't want to monopolize uh, all this okay time. Then I, <laughs> if you have an easy way to do that i suggest send it to, to tara she'll get the information out so any any questions um on the um, town manager's budget that you want um David and Sophie to focus on. All right. So moving on the next chat. Yo, oh, Alan, Kasti. I, I just noticed a big change in the uh, other benefits, <clears throat> and that specifically deals with the town manager's salary. And the town manager's salary is always a point of discussion, or often a point of discussion. So uh, I'd like to get a breakdown of exactly what's happening. I'm sure they can do that. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next budget is personnel um, in the reclass budget four. Hey, Charlie. Yes. It's Wanda again. Am I supposed to put up my hand or can I just? Uh, well, there's a, yeah, you, there's also a little thing. If you look on the Zoom under um, under uh, reactions. Oh, or raise hand. Like okay. Yeah. I had a general question about when you're looking at the salary lines where it says book under FY 2022 budget book and then FY 2023 it says new pay. Like if I wanted to see how much, what percentage a person's salary went up. Am I comparing the budget book to the total at the end? Or I was a little confused. So like the director of human resources, it looks like maybe 5%. And then I had a question about the longevity steps. Most of the time they look like, you know, rounded off numbers, 600, 500. And, but then sometimes there's very large numbers there. So I didn't know how that, maybe that's on the other document you mentioned about. So here, here's, the, I would see, see this. Uh, let's just take um, Karen, Karen Malloy, the director of human resources. So last year, um, fiscal 22, uh, she had, she had a, this uh, 128,906. Okay. And uh, that base pay stays the same this year. But she gets it a longevity increase of sixty four fifty. Now she's in the M schedule. I think, right? Am I, have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, management. Mm -hmm. So in the in the M schedule, um, the uh, well, let me say in general, and, and somebody else, if somebody has better knowledge than I do on this, please, please feel free to speak up. But in general, um, there are two. Um, there, there are three ways that a person's salary can, can be increased. And that is there can be a cost of living increase or a, a, some sort of increase in the base uh, based on a, a percentage, okay? Secondly, in a lot of job classifications, which you, you can find in the pay scale uh, in the back of the manager's book in, in the um, schedule there, there are what's called uh, steps. And based on how long you're in the position, there, you your salary can increase by certain steps, and then um, the last is longevity, 
and that's another um, that's that's more than let's put it this way in, in many of the union negotiations in, in a specific union and specific job position there are a certain number of steps it could be five or six or seven depending upon which case we're talking about and and those steps are pretty well defined but in addition to that if somebody works for the town um, and Micaiah you may know this exactly but for so, so many years, like five years, 10 years, 15 years, they get a longevity increase, which is another increase. So you can have a situation where there's no change in the base, but there is a change due to moving through the steps. And then there could be another change, another increase associated with longevity. I don't know if that was clear enough. But Jolly? <laughs> Jolly? Yes. If I could just, just add to that. <clears throat> With longevity, depending upon what classification you have, you can either have a percentage longevity. And what I mean by that is for every five years of service, your longevity can go from 1% for 5, 2% to 10, 10, 3% for 15 years, all the way up to 30 years. And it can go all, go all the way up to 6%. There are other people in the management, some of the management that have um, flat rate, it, it, it's a flat rate every year, and they um, that flat rate never changes. Yeah. Only the percentage change. On the school side, it, it's a flat rate. On the town side, to give you an example, the police and fire are by percentage. I don't. I think administration is by percentage. I think like public works is a flat rate. To, just to give you an example. Good. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, um, so are we, we're in the human resources, Micaiah. Charlie, uh, I just wanted to note real quickly, one, Christine and I both had an idea. We have to explain this in the handbook. But the other thing while we're here, just wanted to point out the, before someone asks the, the offsets, this is sort of gray billing of work that's done in this department that's being billed to water and sewer or, or some other thing, in this case, water and sewer. And it's not done on an individual level, it's done on a department level. Thank you. Micaiah, do you want to answer any, is there any questions for Micaiah on, on um, the human resources budget or the pay, the uh, classification, paying classification scale? Micaiah, did you want to add anything to this question about the, um, the, the, the um, rate of raises or the types of raises that people can get? I don't think I could do any better than what you and Dave did. That was perfect. I'll, I'll explain it more um, clearly um, when it's my when, time. When we get to your budget. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next budget is number, um, let's see, it would be five. And um, that's finances, five to nine. Al? <clears throat> okay. Uh so any questions for Al on the, um, on the IT budget? You flip over to the expenses. Um. I have my hand raised. Oh, go ahead, John. These are obvious questions, but I'll just say them. What, uh, the Munis software is, we're, we're budgeting $100,000 more than we're spending. Network maintenance is doubling. Why? Um, and then um, I'm unclear about what telephone expenses are in the scope of the IT budget. So you don't need to answer those now. But when we do get into that budget, I'm wondering about the last line, the munis line, the doubling of the network maintenance, and wondering what telephone expenses really actually means. Thanks. Thank yeah, you, John. I, I think uh, in Dean's uh, description earlier on of why people ask questions, one of them is, what is this? And uh, I, I was hoping that when uh, Ida was redoing some of the chart of accounts, maybe some of the descriptions will change. Uh, but thank you for those two questions. Any other questions for uh, Al? on the um, IT section? 
I've got a question, Charlie. Yes. So I see that we still have a line for Informix maintenance, which implies that we have still not dug out from under our um, legacy software. And I'm wondering if we could make sure to ask for an update. Yeah, I'll follow, follow up on that. That's good. Okay, I'm uh, sorry, Annie, which, which line item are you looking at? I am looking at line item 5294, 5294. Informix maintenance. And, you know, there's, there's both a working out, getting rid of that old software, and whether or not there's, you know, any, any income and cost on its replacement, which I believe is another Munis module. And then whether or not that implies any changes in personnel, uh, job descriptions, job responsibilities, anything like that. Um, Alan Jones. Uh, my uh, question, same question as last year, uh, the, the transition to Microsoft 365, uh, there are license fees and there's a lot of labor going to transition. So I'd, I'd like to hear something about the, the expenses involved in switching to 365. Okay, Thanks. which line item are you looking at? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have no okay. idea. I just know the town's transitioning to Microsoft 365 and I don't, I'm, I'm trying to find that, those expenses. So I guess that's my question. Where are they? Yeah, okay. Wanda. I just wanted to add, if it wasn't already stated, the software maintenance line. Three, is it? Five, five, three oh five. Yeah. Yeah, John up. mentioned that. John Ellis mentioned that. Okay. Anyone else have any questions on IT? Because I can't see all the boxes. Okay, let's go to the next budget six. Comptroller, aha. Hard to complain about that budget going down. Um, I guess I'm gonna ask the obvious question. On a comptroller budget. Expenses. Pardon me, John. What, uh, we, there was telephone. What is telephone expenses? Now it's. I mean, it went, now, it went down well, from twenty-seven thousand. That was to shifted. Three. That was shifted to IT some years ago. Okay. Well, twenty twenty, they spent twenty-seven thousand dollars on it. So yes. Yeah, that, but that was before that was the, which was changed to IT. Okay. Any other questions on the comptroller's budget? Okay, next budget. Oh, oh, I had one. Sorry, go ahead. Just the out of state travel. I wondered. Um, is is okay. that conferences that we don't go to anymore or something? You can check on that out. Well, I'm sorry, what is the question? Out of state travel, 5210. Okay. But what, what's the question? Why do we need it? Where are they going? <laughs> so, I want to go out of state. I didn't, don't get to go anywhere. <laughs> uh, next budget. Treasurer collector. Oh, no. I, I have a question on this budget, Al. Okay. Um, I think I, I would like to investigate why we have all these people. Uh, you know, we, we have a remote payment now and, uh, you know, a better Munis system and automatic, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's been highly automated over the last bunch of years. We've spent a lot of money on it. Um, better cash management system, et cetera. And our, the, the employee count in that department never goes down. Good question. I remember there was a, a finance committee who was working with me on this budget years ago, and he was always screaming about how many people are in this department. And then he got elected treasurer and he stopped screaming. But <laughs> it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be looking at the body count there. I think you might want to think about that terminology, Charlie. Uh, sorry, personnel count. 
Health so like health care. Health care. So that might encompass like the bill printing line, 5258. Well, it, it, what I'm really- you still print is, bills? Yeah, well, that's part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, um, a lot, you know, a lot of people in the office that I think maybe doing things that should be automated. Maybe they are automated, but people are still there. My question on this budget um, is, is also related to the bill printing and, and I, I, I don't remember postage as being a separate budget, but it, but it seems to be now. So, um, you know, as, as we spoke about last year, I've been an Arlington taxpayer since 1999. I've gotten four tax bills a year uh, and thrown every single one of them out, um, wasting the town, um, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. Um, and that's because I have a mortgage. Um, most property owners have a mortgage and our mortgage companies pay our, um, pay our tax bills uh, for us. Um, so it's just goes right to the recycling. So I'm interested in um, learning more about the Phyllis's, uh, uh, you know, getting people to do online payments. I, I signed up for it. Um, it works well. They don't send me a bill anymore. Um, I had a bunch of conversations with her in the fall about uh, promoting it a little more. So I'm wondering when we could start to see some some savings from uh, both bill printing and um, sending out mailers that um, really are are probably unnecessary for for most people and and how we can do better marketing to let taxpayers know they have this opportunity to get less mail that would be my question for this budget okay any other questions on the treasurer's budget okay want to move on Alan, to um I know postage. Any questions on postage? John Ellis just asked this question a minute ago on, on an aspect of it. Okay, let's move on. The next one is um, assessors. Okay, so Alan, I have a question on this budget, but it's it's actually not directly related to the budget. But there is a um, there are a number of I don't know if it's yearly, but there are nonetheless warrant articles that are passed from time to time with large sums of money in it associated with uh, physical inventory of real estate parcels. In in the uh, I, I think this physical inventory is not necessarily taken all in one year; it may be spread out over several years. But it's always useful to find out how much money there is left over in that warrant article. That's one of the warrant articles that can carry funds forward. You know, I I do have a question on this one too. If I can jump in. Go ahead, John. Um, the 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 assessor also does the business uh, equipment assessment. Is it is that right? Yes. So um, Verizon or whoever owns our poles has started to put um, kind of expensive equipment on the top of poles. It looks like it might be for 5G, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I have one on Teal Street. Um, and um, I'm wondering whether the assessor is, is uh, capturing the cost of this new business equipment that um, is being added to, to, uh, to the property and uh, somebody's it should it should be it's taxable i would think so um i just want to see if uh, it's being tracked okay any other questions on the assessment budget okay moving on what's the next one I forgot uh, john, right. <clears throat> just for, just a minute uh john what i i'm trying to write all this down what was the uh business equipment on the polls who was doing that I assume it's the telephone company Verizon, and it looks like 5G equipment. I could send you a picture. I don't. I don't know what it is, but they're putting expensive things on, on top of telephone poles and it's business equipment for something. Chris, we've got three cable companies in town, so I suppose it could be any of them. 
I'll send you a photo offline and, and separately. Okay. Um, okay, the next budget I think is legal and that's budget 10, uh, David. Does anybody have any questions on the, on the legal budget? Okay, let's move on. Town clerk. Questions on the town clerk's budget. So I think uh, one question I have is uh, what's happening to the these people that are that are moved out of the select select board budget and are now in the town clerk's budget look okay I, I, um i i definitely will ask that question with the town clerk i know she's um it's another work in progress charlie i know that to what extent i'm not sure And why is the big jump? Why why is the big jump in electronic voting equipment? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not asking for the answer. I'm just saying that's a question. Okay. Yeah, I, I really want to scrutinize uh, the, the town clerk's budget because there's been a lot of changes from last year to this year. Um, that 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 I I just need an explanation so I can explain it to you folks. That that's why I keep on saying it's it, it's a work in progress. Yes, Christine. Um, Charlie, I would like a report uh, about what modernization efforts the town clerk has done since we last spoke to her last year. I think it was when we approved a request for over thirty thousand dollars to a hire consultant, and we prodded her that we wanted. Uh, her to be looking into modernizing that office. So I'd, I'd like to get a report on what's been done so far. Got that, David? Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you, Christine. Jo Alan Jones? That's right. Uh, regarding elections, I'd just like to ask um, what uh, conversations they've had with the Election Modernization Committee and uh, if anything is coming out of that. Uh, Alan, I'll, I'll ask that question. I know the um, one of the leaders of that group no longer lives in the town, moved away. And that was the also that person was also the assistant town moderator. Yeah, so I'll just leave that question for you to answer later. Yeah, now you can ask them about it. Thank okay. You. Any other questions on the? Uh, Town clerk's budget. Okay, the Mr. next Chair, one is. Sorry. Oh, never mind. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Um, the next budget is board of registrars. That's still that's still the elections, right? No, better board of registrars is this, um, the budget that they've always come under the clerk. Is uh, one full-time employee, then that the board of registrars are uh, appointed, and there's three of them, and they they meet when, during uh, during the elections. They verify the elections. Okay. Any questions on the registrars? Technically, the town clerk is the is the board of registrar. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, but there is she she receives a stipend. Um, and the, the uh, board, of, board of, the three board of registrars receive a stipend, but they do have a full-time employee in that office. It used to be okay. two, now it's one. Any other questions on that budget? Okay, so what's the next one uh, is, uh, are we on 13, parking? parking. That's uh, Al Tosti. I had a question. I think we, we should find out who's, who is the uh, parking clerk right now, Al. 
Okay. If it's a treasure or not. And my, my question was that I see at least three different people that I recognize as giving me parking tickets, um, but there's only one staff member. And um, we, if if the people who are actually making parking tickets are not under this budget, then why, why aren't they under this budget? And what's the rationale for? They're in the police in department budget, budget, I think. Yeah, okay. they're police department. Is that? Okay. We, I guess this could be a conversation for later, but yeah, it, it would seem to me that if they're a parking expense, that they should be in a parking budget. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's differences. Take my hand down. Any other questions on parking? Okay. Um, so 14 is uh, again, David. Okay, planning, planning and community development. Does anybody have any questions about that? They wanna. <clears throat> I have one is, uh, why is the offset going up so so much? Okay. And that's it. Yeah, and also, um, I thought last year we had a couple of temporary positions in that department that were gonna go away at some point. Am I misremembering that? Um, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but, but you're right, Charlie. Um, there were some positions that were supposed to be only part-time and gone away. Yeah. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. We should check, check the, try to reconcile that. And, and um, I, I, I received some communications from some citizens that um, in, a, in a recent board a zoning board working group meeting that was apparently being led by uh, the director of planning and community development. People were asking about the cost of some um, some housing increases in facilities or whatever, um, and, and the impact on on the educational bu uh, budget and. Um, Apparently the director of planning and community development told them that this could not be discussed because it was illegal. Um, I, I intend to uh, pursue this with the town manager and town council, but you might check on that as well. Charlie, was, was that with the zoning or was that with the redevelopment board? It was the ZBWG, the, I think it's called the zoning board working group or something to that effect. Okay, I, I'll check on it. I, I've never heard of that board. <laughs> In any event, it's something I think, I mean, I, I you know, we're, we're pressuring people to try to control costs. Right. And, um, and if, if there are people in the town that are telling people that they can't discuss the cost of a town project, it's sort of counterintuitive to me. I, I, I'm only guessing, I, I don't know. What's that? I'll investigate for you. Thank you. Any any other questions on the? It... Yep, quick one for me. Yes, John. Um, wonder if the economic development coordinator position has maybe any any good news that might lead to more revenue for the town, and whether there have been any successes in this fiscal year that might increase um, assessments. Good question. Okay. Any other questions on um, redevelopment board? Okay, um, the next one is 15, what is that? Um, oh, this is sort of the redevelopment board is the same, same group of people. So we can go, oh yeah, zoning board of appeals. Annie. Anybody got any questions about the zoning board of appeals? Big increase. Um, I, I isn't that that's my budget. Is that your budget? Yeah, that's your budget. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. sorry, Annie. Yeah. I was looking at your hand being raised. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. It, it, oh no, it, it, I didn't have my hand raised. 
Although there's only this budget comes under the building inspector, why I don't know, but it does. Um, and it's um, there is uh, there's, I looked at that and said, but there's a large increase. I have a suspicion, and I'm only guessing that that part-time position went to full-time position, but I'm not sure. It's another example of a, a, another work in progress, if, if you may, because there's been a changing of the guard up at the building. Uh, you know, David, you should, you should uh, contact uh, Christian Klein. I think he's the chairman. Sorry. Uh, right. Yes. I actually, so we, I actually spoke to Christian recently on another topic, and he mentioned this, and he said they were very... It's related to all the work that is now almost finished, is my understanding. But everything that was related to the mother property or all the all the really large um, matters that the zoning board was dealing with that was taking a lot of time, and so this was put in place to, to help with that. Um, so I think we will definitely dig more. But it, it was based on that. It's based on the past year's worth of increased work because of the big projects in front of them. Ch uh, Charlie, we normally, uh, I, I've, I've never met with the zoning board people. Uh, who I've, I've met with and who, who Peter had met with previously was the, um, the, the building commissioners, commissioner because they set the zoning board of appeals budget. And the last time Peter spoke to the, um, the chairman of the zoning, he didn't even know we had a budget. So, but it has to do with the salary of, of, of the note taker in the process. And the process in the last couple of years has exploded. And it's, it, it's I think it's now gonna be a full-time position. Okay. Well, just, you know, dig into it. And uh, I, I think Christian Klein is, is the guy that's sort of behind this. Yes, he's, he's I believe he's the chairman of, of, of the zoning. I think um, so, yeah. But I've, yeah. I've always, I always met with the building inspector on this budget issue. Because they were the ones that, that changed it from, uh, they took a, a, part, a, a building inspector, part-time of, of that duty and responsibility was transferred over to the zoning for duties okay. in the zoning. So it, it's, um, like I say, Okay, it's well, just, just, just dig into it. We'll, when we get to discuss the budget, we can get into okay. more detail. What's the next yep. budget, yeah. Alan? Facilities. Okay, I think that's um, uh, Mine. that's under, that's Christine, right? Christine under the. Uh, yep. Yep. Any questions on the facilities? I, I have one. How come we can't keep a facilities director? <laughs> that's a very good question. I wondered that two directors ago. Thank God, it's vacant again. Yeah. So. So we've so we've had four so far since the deposition was created. We've had four. One of them, one of them is the assistant town manager. Does the facilities director report directly to the manager? I, I believe so. Yes, he does. Yeah. Any other questions on facilities? Okay, let's move on. Um, public works. Okay, we could spend a month on this one, but any questions on public works? Natural I've got research. A question. Um, I would really like to understand what's going on with um, particularly food waste diversion and what the plan is for that. Um, because I know it, it affects our costs. Obviously, we want to know what's going on with the recycling budget. And I would love to know whether or not it is on either the town manager's radar or the director of public works radar to reconsider the possibility of a pay as you throw trash collection program. So, um, So Andy, I would just a comment here. I think um, that that would be a good question to ask Altasi to follow up on in this operations research business that he's doing. But I don't think um, I don't think that 
it's the role of the finance commi committee to uh, push a department manager on making a policy decision that's probably got to be made at the board of selectmen's level. So um, I, th I think it's a good issue to consider in our operations research, but I'm not sure it's good to undertake in a budget discussion with the department head. All right. Can I request that since we're looking at trash collection for operations research, that that operations research include an analysis of uh, the financial implications of pay as you throw trash collection? You, you just asked. So yep. it's, up, it's, a, it's a good offline negotiation between you and Alice to what he wants to include in that research. <laughs> but yes. All right. Good, good question. Okay. And any other questions on? Um, uh, the either the you know waste. Um, I, I think one thing I'd like to see Christine is to dig into um, the cost of field maintenance and how they're handling that, and and also what's going on with with tree replacement. The the efficacy and the cost of it. I mean, I think I think we lost a lot of trees along Mass Avenue because of underground methane or something. I don't remember the details, but. I come across these these uh, holes in the ground, you know, with the grates on them that there's no tree in, and I assume that those trees have died. And um, we should sort of understand what's going on there. Anybody else have questions on DPW? Uh, I, in line with what uh, Charlie just said. Uh, it'd be interesting to know if we're being reimbursed for the cost of putting in those new trees uh, by the gas company. I'm not sure which gas company it is, but uh, you know, we lost a ton of trees there. Um, and has, has the gas company fixed those areas so we don't lose more trees? Okay, let me suggest this. DPW is a is a huge uh, budget, so feel free to send uh, notes to uh, Christine offline if you have other detailed uh, questions. Um, what's the next one after um, public works? Police. Okay, that's Daryl and John. Yeah. So let, let me just start with. Um, a couple of questions that I know we're going to ask. One is um, uh, over the personnel personnel side looks pretty static. Um, on the expense side, it looks like there's a lot of moving around, but uh, we'll ask obviously. But I'm guessing that's um, that's more bookkeeping. They're moving stuff around between different accounts. Um, on the personnel side, I think one of the major issues is there's um, there's 10 vacancies in the department. Um, that's about twice um, what I've seen over the five or six years or whatever it is I've been doing that budget. So um, uh, there's some questions there about why the high number and then what's the what are their expectations about being able to fill them? I think eight of them are patrolmen. Um, and then, of course, then there's the other 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 question, um, uh, John, I'll anticipate your question about where things stand with the uh, um, the whole body camera issue um, that, that came up last year. So those are the, the two or three questions I, I have on the list. Uh, so if anybody has others. If I can only make one comment um, in a um, polite way, I think, is that we, we nowadays I think we have patrol officers as opposed to patrolmen. I think they call they call them patrol oh, police patrol. Sorry. Yeah. I get educated on this at home all the time. You know. <laughs> Daryl, my question would be about um, 5180 court time, which goes from $1,000 to $37,142. Seems an extremely precise 
amount and uh, wondering what, what, what's happening that all of a sudden there's a lot more court time or expense or what, what, what the story of that is. Oh, the fifth run away? Okay, yeah. Any other questions on police? Okay, let's go to fire. John, are you going to do fire? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, does anybody have any questions? I mean, things are pretty, pretty static, pretty uh, level funded, um, both on, you know, there's some slight increases on salary, which are probably contractual and on the expense side, everything is uh, is level funded. Um, and so the overtime budget's gone down. Right? Yes. And what's the status on vacancies? Um, they are still. They're showing. I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six vacancies. Uh huh. And I don't recall whether that's how that compares to um, last year's number of vacancies. But as you point out, there's a slight decrease in overtime. So perhaps there are fewer vacancies. OK. Um, in, in praise of the fire department, I will notice that they did uh, three uh, spy rescues last week in one day. Pretty, pretty impressive. Yes, they did. Um, what's the next budget? Uh, 17, 18, 19? Is that schools? Oh, inspections. Who has inspections? Is that, uh, that you, John? No, that, that's, that's me, Charlie, Daryl. Um, uh, so there, there's not a whole lot going on in this budget. Um, they have a new director. Um, uh, Mike Byrne, Mike Byrne left. Um, so I do want to talk to um, talk to the new director about what whatever, whatever plans they might have. Um, it was also the issue last year where um, we suggested that perhaps adding um, some staff might help them generate some additional revenue. Um, and if you remember, we asked them to give us some specific metrics on you know, how adding that person would help them increase revenues, and they were never able to do it. Right. Uh, and then I'm noticing this year, um, they actually have one, two, three, they have three vacancies, um, including an inspector. So um, I'd be interested to find out how how they're going to keep up the keep up or even increase permit revenues and inspection revenues and things like that if uh, they're running under staff. Looks like any, any, go, go, go ahead. Sophie, was that you? Yes. Uh, so I have a quick question or something that um, I've noticed is, or one question is, how much could they update their systems to help them um, with the paperwork be, be more uh, modernized? I noticed that for uh, like violations or where they issue daily fines, uh, whether it's sidewalks or, or violations of bylaws or whatnot, they still do it all by hand um, and on slips that they have to fill out and their daily slips that they have to fill out for each individual violation. So I'm just curious, it's just whether somebody is, is, is it possible to modernize that system? I, I did a site visit down there when I took over the, the agency and I was, um, I don't want to get too negative. I, I was surprised by the, um, the amount of um, paper-based record keeping they still had. Um, and I, as far as I know, um, they haven't done anything to digitize their records, and I'm guessing since they have to move out of the uh, um, public works building because of the you know the rebuild. 
Um, I would guess that they haven't done anything, but I will ask. Can you um, also, Daryl? Can you um, see if you can if you can get some sort of uh, statistical report on the number of violations and complaints they've had versus the number of follow up um, investigations or fines or whatever the appropriate sanctions are for violations. I mean, I've seen a number of citizen complaints that, um, you know, um, um, buildings being built in more, more expansively than the building permits and things like that, uh, and bylaws that aren't being enforced. Um, we should get some sort of a reading on that. Yeah, okay. Any other questions on inspections? Sophie? Oh, oh no? Okay, no. Okay, um, libraries. So, Andy, this is your budget. Any this questions on the libraries? John Ellis. Yeah, I, I had a question. Um, Fox Library was closed for the entirety of fiscal year 2021, mm -hmm. and I wondered if that led to any staff savings or heating savings or any kind of savings because it was totally closed for the entire fiscal year. Let me make a note of that. Anyone else? Well, you could, I mean, one thing to pursue is what Mm -hmm. What activities are, were all these people doing during the pandemic? I mean, how much, how many, what was the library attendance? Were there jobs switched around? What, what was the impact and how it was handled? I mean, I mean, there was, during the pandemic, I think there's long periods of time where the library wasn't providing services. I'm not uh, sure. Actually, I think they were they actually delivered books if you wanted them. Really? Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm I wrong. mean, it'd be inter interesting to see, but they've been open and they've been. Um, it's it'd be interesting to hear. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll ask Charlie, but I don't believe that they were like closed closed for that long. Uh, okay. They did. A, this is once... They did a lot. She did a lot of programs like the grab and go thing. Um, yeah. So she did a lot of, had a lot of ways to make it so people could access books from the library. I mean, I don't think it was full staffing. But. Okay. Um. I'll get, I'll get, I'll get a positive report, Mary Margaret. I'll get, you know, something that'll, I mean, I'm sure there's a good story to tell there and yeah. not highlight it. She, I'm she, sure. I I'm sure her. there is. She's always thinking of ways to make yep. things happen. I, I'm sure there is. I think you may find mm -hmm. that, uh, based on my personal experience, they actually probably did more work when they were closed because they were hampered in the area, and they actually, when you reserve a book, they have to put it out ahead of the time and label it. Mm -hmm. It's um, they actually probably do more work now, but but we'll see. Yep. They also have an electronic lending uh, methodology, Charlie. So, you know, they're yes, I know, I know. We get, I get a lot of those books at home here that way. I just, right. just asked that thought it would be a good yep. thing to understand. Absolutely. So, um, we're at Health and Human Services. I noticed that it's, uh, it's uh, ten minutes to uh, ten. Mm -hmm. So. Um, let me just, did I, did I send everybody, uh, I sent out a, a, a schedule of, um, mm -hmm. this was only earlier this afternoon, a draft schedule of, of um, hearings for budgets. And my thought here was this year, as opposed to saying on a Tuesday, on a Monday night, well, who's gonna have budgets next week? And then on Wednesday you say, well, how many budgets have we got? I've actually had the temerity to make a schedule and say, have your budgets done by this date, okay? And that's in that draft spreadsheet. So I would appreciate it if people would look at that 
and see what, what's unreasonable or, or whether we can meet that schedule. Uh, we have to overlay on that the, the warrant article hearings, which are going to um, be forthcoming as soon as we get a draft of the of the town warrant. Uh, I'm, ex I'm hoping that that's going to be by the 7th of uh, February. Um, on Charlie, did you, oh, sorry, Charlie, did you say you sent that out today? Yes. Oh, this around, afternoon. It was around four o'clock. I did not get it either. I I didn't get it. No, no, I did not. I did not get it either, Charlie. Did you oh, try well, the? I it just must be, I maybe I use the. Uh, maybe I use that automatic thing that we're not allowed to use. Could that be? Yeah. Possible? You can send it to me, and I'll send it to everyone. All right, I will do that immediately after okay. this meeting. Uh, I apologize for that. Well, I'm glad somebody said something because I was in blissful ignorance. So. Um, in any event, um, heads up, David, you, I put you first on that schedule because you have always traditionally been the earliest. I don't, I don't know if that's reasonable or not, but so um, we can certainly discuss that schedule next on Wednesday night. Okay? Also on Wednesday night, the town manager and deputy town manager, uh, director of finance will be coming to give us their annual perspective. Um, and then um, on the following Wednesday night, which would be the ninth, I think, seventh, I think. Let me look. Does anybody know? Um, Wednesday, Monday's the seventh. Yes. Yeah, right. so, okay. So February 9th. Um, on February 9th, the uh, superintendent of schools and Mike Mason are going to come before us in. Um, I mentioned what the, uh, yeah, that's Wednesday the ninth. So, um, and we can also on, on um, Monday night, after the, after the manager is finished, we can pick up on um, starting with health and human services on a brief review of these budgets. Um, let me ask a question as a, does anybody have any comments on whether this has been a helpful process or not? I'm looking forward to it when they get to me. That way, it's less less questions I have to ask. So. <laughs> I okay. Think well. Helpful. Yeah, Charlie. I think we can actually measure that to see how many budgets are tabled due to unanswered questions. That's true. We'll have a good metric. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, so, Charlie, are we meeting Wednesday? Yes. Uh, Wednesday. This Wednesday. Yes. You have an agenda. The town manager is going to be here. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Pardon me? You're not giving us Groundhog Day off. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. <laughs> but didn't everybody get the agenda for today and for Wednesday? I definitely got today's and I got the meeting invite for Wednesday, so I assume the agenda is somewhere. I thought they were both sent out in the same email. Yeah, they were. The, but the I don't think it's not the big schedule you were talking. The schedule. You no, were I know the other schedule is separate, and I'll I'll get take care of that tonight. So, okay, I I, I think uh, in the theory of the Mary Ronan practice of long standing, a, a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, Second. the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>